Deep below Butcher Jones' meat shop, the adventuring party found a coffin slightly open. And a hole in the wall leading to a sacrificial altar. And then the necromancer's lair. What had the butcher been putting in the meat pies? <laughs> Hello guys, gals, and non-binary pals. On today's episode of the Warren Christmas Village channel, I'm going to make these. Three-dimensional dungeon tiles. Part one is going to be about the construction, how to make the side nicks right there that you can see in the texture, and how to carve these edges so it looks like carved rock. And then part two is going to be about painting. So the first thing we're going to need is some XPS foam. And this is the stuff I got from Lowe's. It's the blue foam. Uh, we're going to need scraps or whatever you want. This is, an, a, uh, I've already cut this down a little bit. And then we're going to need some tools. We're going to need some straight edges. Now this is a really cheapy one, which is not the best to use, but it is extender and it's inexpensive. So as long as we go slowly, it should be okay. Another thing we're going to need is some uh, rulers of some sort. I use these Omni grids, which are from uh, when I like to quilt. They're great for sewing. This one's a 24 inch long, and, the, and this one right here is a nice 12 inch square. So what I think I'll be doing is tracing this on the XPS foam just for ease of use. Omni grid, and here comes the yapper doodle next door. And you're also going to need something to cut on. I'm using this uh, cutting board, but you could also use cardboard or something else. Just make sure you don't damage anything. And then um, here are some samples of the work I've done so far. Uh, what you can see I'm doing here, I got this scrap that got hit with some paint. So uh, it kind of looks like blood splatter. It's kind of kind of kind of cool that way. But uh, here is what I'm going to do: is bevel these edges and cut some chips. In first thing you need to do is figure out what size pieces you want and go ahead and measure those. This one was uh, about 12 by 11 and a half. And then take your straight edge and cut at least three times to get through the foam. And each time you cut, take your blade a little bit deeper. This is a thick piece of foam. It's two inches. So I went a couple times. Now you can put your straight edge up against it and cut, but I don't, I prefer not to because it just kind of slides around and I'd rather get a solid grip on the XPS foam. So you can see I'm going to cut at least three times. I cut more than that actually. So then there's this on the one side and then I eventually turn it over and cut and then I cut once on the back and it pops right off. So for cleaner edges, just take your time with cutting it nice and slow. I was worried about the structural integrity of my blade choice. So at this point I took and I cut along the side of the piece and then I turned it on its belly and I cut along the back and it popped right off like that. And there's my piece. So the next step is I take my blade and I angle it and cut along the edge to give a nice beveled effect. My first cut didn't go so deep, so I just went over it again. See, nothing's really coming off. A little bit came off. And then I just went back and did it again. And take a close look. You can see how I go in and out and in and out. That creates some variation, as if someone had chiseled off some stone kind of effect to it. There you go. There's another slice to bevel. So just keep beveling the edges until you're happy with how it looks. That's basically what I did and then put some nicks in the base and keep chunking away, sculpting to make it look like a piece of rock. Here's how I take those little chunks out to create like a little nick, pretty simple. And then I take the corners and do the same on the corners. I also put a little nicks on the base of the piece because I just think that adds a nice aesthetic look. Ta-da! Also, don't forget to smooth down your corners. Just keep chunking away. Slice, slice, slice. I put this in a fast forward so you could see it a lot faster because it's kind of repetitious, but do this to all your terrain.
the progress I've gotten so far. I've got a couple of these that are 12 by 12, are pretty close. These two are the 12 by 12s. One of them is uh, 11 and a half by 12. I think it's this one. And then this one's more of a rectangular shape. And then I took this big scrap that I had, which is gonna be perfect for the scenario I have planned for my players. But it has a score mark down the middle that goes pretty deep. So I'm gonna seal that up with glue. Take a close look, you can see I beveled all the edges, made some stratification on the rock. This is purely aesthetics, because I kind of want to give that feel like the Hankerin has his tiles with the rune hammer. I like that effect. But I'm going to do my tops a little bit different, so stay tuned. And here we go, I'm going to be using the Arlene's Original Tacky Glue, America's favorite craft glue, and I lost the cap last time, so I've just put a little bit of a skewer in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to coat everything with this glue, water it down a little bit to help it spread, and then I'm going to add some pavement sand. Here's what everything looks like with the Arlene's Techie Glue on top. Looks pretty good. Here is my patio paper that I have. So I'm just going to start sprinkling this on top of everything where I want the gravel to go. this. Take this and tap it off on the other piece. Ta-da! Look at that nice texture. down, grab a new piece, just take that, have it off right in there. Look at that, look at that beautiful texture, that's gonna look great. Progress. Okay, so I want to show a little technique like here, right? This uh, glue and sand combo is still wet, but right here I wanted to add some more because look how it kind of scraped off. So what I do is I take my brush and I put it in the glue. It got a little messy, sorry about that. So I take my brush, dab it in the glue, dab it in the water, right? And then dab on top and see how that just adds to the texture if I take a motion uh, let me just show you what if I take a motion and I do a sweeping motion you kind of see how it's clumping up here which is fine if that's what you want to do if you want to create some more texture go ahead and slop like that but I don't want to so I'm just gonna dab like this and then add some more and then add some more sand Okay, and then, I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna tap this off and see how that fixed the spot right there, just like new. Over here I went ahead and tapped some out and I'm gonna put the sand on there. I was doing this and then I thought, oh, I should probably show this trick 
this little hack. So here's another one that I did that I just wanted to add a couple layers of some sand to. And there we go. And here are the pieces drying in the sun. It's very bright over here. These should dry up pretty quickly and then once they do I'm going to move on to the next step. Normally I like to let this dry overnight but I think we'll be fine if I just give this a little bit. That texture on there. There's a, some close-ups of the texture. It's really nice. It's going to look really good when it's painted up. The next step is to go ahead and use my PVA sealant that I like. And I'm going to put that all over the entire terrain piece, being careful to seal in the bits right here. And there's a biplane up there. sealant and it's the very bottom barrel of my container so I suppose I'll do a video on how I make this. Here's the brush I used earlier. I didn't even wash it. I just soaked it in here to make sure that the glue wouldn't dry which is fine because I'm gonna add a little bit of that water to this because it's thick. This is a little thick. That's good. Okay. And then come over here and just paint my terrain. The top part, I'm just gonna dab it on because I don't want to take the risk of pulling out what I, the work I just did since I didn't let this sit overnight. And then see how that just coats the terrain and does an extra layer of adhesive and adhesion, protects the gravel from falling out. sure to coat the sides too because I will be doing some rattle cannery. If that's even a word, I'm going to make it a word. I'm going to be using spray paint, aka rattle cans, on this and I don't want the chemicals to absorb it. I think that was a passenger jet or something. Here's a shot of the terrain all thick with the sealant. This is going to dry up nicely and don't worry about that extra, it's going to settle in and dry up. Thank you for watching the tutorial thus far. I'm going to end this and then we'll do the painting will be the next in the series because the last one I did was 40 minutes and that was a bit of a nightmare to edit on my phone. Uh, if you liked something or if you learned something new or you just enjoyed watching me ramble on, please hit the like and subscribe and the notification bell and whatever that stuff is. I don't know, it's somewhere down there. Thank you very much and have a good one.